There's that chant we have at the end of every chanting session. Through the power of the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, all the Buddhas, all the Dharma, all the Sangha, may you forever be well. What is that power? Where does it come from? The Buddha gained his power from his generosity, his virtue, through his meditation, developing concentration, developing discernment, all the way to nirvana, as did the Sangha. And the Dhamma teaches us this is, this is where you get the good power in your mind, and the power by which you will be well. In other, in other words, when you follow the Buddha's example in those three activities, that's how the power is going to have an influence on your life. Here in the West we often start out with meditation, and then after a while we learn about the precepts and then we learn about generosity. You go to a retreat, the first thing they teach you is meditation, and then they say, well, we also have to have precepts, and at the end they hit you with a generosity talk, which is not how the Buddha did it. It starts with generosity. The idea that you're not going to be just holding everything for yourself, but you're happy to see other people happy as well. And that means you're willing to give up a little of your comfort, some of your wealth, other things that you might be able to hold on to, but you decide, no, I want to share it with somebody else. That mind state provides the basis for everything else. Because after all, we're looking for happiness that doesn't harm anybody, and actually happiness that can give. It has to start with generosity. It's one of the reasons why the Buddha said that a stingy person can't get in a jhana and certainly can't get the noble attainments. But the Buddha's attitude towards generosity is interesting. In some religions they teach you, don't be proud about your goodness because it doesn't really come from you. It comes from some creator god or something. But the Buddha's attitude is not that way at all. It says, be proud of the fact that you have been generous. See that as a really good thing. See that as something you'd like to share. And that's what dedicating merit is all about. You give and then you think of the fact that you're going to be benefiting from this, and then you'd like to share that benefit with somebody else. That makes the mind even more generous, more inclined to think of others. In fact, it's this idea of dedicating merit that lies at the basis of goodwill. But it first has to start simply with appreciating the happiness that comes from a harmless action. And you want to hold that in mind. Oftentimes when people are suffering from addictions, one of the things they're taught is on an evening or a day or a night when you don't give in to your addiction, on the following morning you should Remind yourself how good you feel from having not given in, and hold that sense of happiness in mind to remind yourself the next time around. And that strengthens your resolve that you're not going to give in the next night or the next night, because you realize it really feels good when you don't give in. You start thinking about the long term, not just what you feel like right now, but you think about the long term of how you would feel the next morning, and then that goes on to longer periods of time. Well, the same applies to all the practices that count as merit. Remind yourself how good it feels that you can be generous, how good it feels that you can be virtuous, that you can have the time to meditate. That will make you more inclined to want to do more of it. And you get more and more appreciative of this happiness that doesn't harm anybody. And you want to make it greater, and you want to make it more harmless. I mean, nirvana is the only thing that's totally harmless. Even when you're sitting or doing concentration, we require a body that has to feed. There's going to be some oppression of some beings, either the, if you're having meat, the beings who provided the meat. If you're, if you're not having meat, then the beings have to provide the, the food for you. Work in the fields, work in the factories. Deliver the food. Fix the food. 
you can't really say you're harming those people, but you're, if there were one less mouth, it would be better. Nirvana has no mouths. It doesn't need to feed on anything at all. So as you appreciate the, the idea of a happiness that doesn't have to harm anybody, it starts with generosity and it ends up with nirvana. As Lung Pudun said, the practice is one thing clear through. So as you're working on the precepts, dealing with the rules, whether you're following the five or the eight precepts of the 227 rules in the body mocha, or the, thinking about even all, all the many, many more rules that the monks have, remind yourself it's good to be able to live in the world in a relatively harmless way. And appreciate that every day as you're doing it. That's something that's easy to forget when it happens every day. And think of how good it is to live in a society where other people are trying to observe the precepts too, even though there may be disagreements and sort of personal issues. The fact that everybody is abiding by the precepts makes us so much nicer to live together. We should have appreciation for that. And think about, wouldn't it be nice if more people appreciated that? That's what the dedication of merit is all about. Merit is not a quantity or a material thing that you can send out to people. It's a quality of the mind, the sense of well-being that comes from appreciating a happiness that's harmless, doing things that lead to a happiness that's harmless. And sometimes they'll talk about something having making a lot of merit or something making a little bit of merit. It's, it's not the kind of thing you can really measure. The Buddha does make comparisons. But how can you measure your merit against somebody else's? The best thing to do is measure it against your own attitude. Do you feel a sense of well-being as you meditate? Now, it may be frustrating sometimes. Your, your meditation is nothing but the mind wandering off and you're having to pull it back. It wanders off and you pull it back. Well, the fact that you're pulling it back is a good thing. As the Buddha said, even one moment of a skillful thought has a lot of merit. One moment of goodwill, even just the amount of a finger snap, has a lot of merit. So learn how to appreciate these things, nurture them. Think of them as little seeds that can yield large trees if you take care of them. So have a sense of appreciation. It's probably the best translation for the word anamodana. When we dedicate merit to others, they're supposed to have a feeling of anamodana, appreciation of the fact that, yes, there's someone doing good in the world and they're thinking of me. And they appreciate that. But the important thing is they appreciate that someone's doing good in the world. There are people who meditate. There are people who are generous. There are people who are virtuous. It's good to learn how to appreciate that. And then you look at yourself. Well, that's something I can do, too. And when you do it, learn how to appreciate it. The more you can appreciate it, the more merit you get, and the more you have to share. So when you come to the practice of meditation, and when the Buddha talks about the merit of meditation, he's thinking primarily of meditation on the theme of goodwill. But if you realize the happiness that comes from virtue, the happiness that comes from generosity, when you're wishing for others to be happy, you're basically wishing for them to be virtuous and generous and to develop attitudes of goodwill, too. And then you ask yourself, how can I help? Because when you're wishing goodwill for others, it's not simply thinking that your thoughts of goodwill are going to be magical and make everybody happy just as they are. Because a lot of people out there, you think about, well, I'd rather not they be happy just as they are. Because they're not being virtuous, they're not being generous. They're not trying to get any control over their minds. But as you come to the practice of goodwill with an appreciation of generosity and virtue, 
and realize, oh, this is what we're wishing for, that other people do this as well. So learn to appreciate generosity, appreciate virtue, both when other people dedicate it to you and then when you've got it and developed it for yourself. Because that multiplies the merit even more. It multiplies, of course, the sense of well-being even more. Because it's good to know that your happiness doesn't have to depend on oppressing anybody. You always wonder about those people who can live in palatial places that are based on oppression, and how can they be happy? You don't need to live in a palatial place to be happy. The best thing to make yourself happy is to know that your well-being doesn't depend on harming anybody at all. That's the happiness that feels good deep down inside. Now remind yourself, that's what you're working on right now. This is how the Buddha developed his power. It's not just ordinarily Sunday school niceness. There's a power that comes from this goodness that can sustain the mind, can sustain your well-being, and spread about, spread around. And nurture the well-being of others. It's good all the way through. So when the practice gets dry, This attitude of appreciation helps to give it a little more moisture, helps to lubricate the practice. John Fuang used to say that our practice needs a lubrication like an engine needs a lubricant. With the meditation, of course, it's the lubricant of the refreshment that comes when the mind is settling in. Prior to that, it's the lubricant that comes from appreciating the goodness, the happiness, it doesn't have to depend on harming anyone. It's to learn how to generate thoughts of appreciation. And don't be afraid to pat yourself on the back when you've done something good, because that's a way in which you can encourage yourself to do more good. to the point where you can develop the kind of power that the Buddha and the Dharma and the Sangha have. After all, the Sangha is open to everybody. The possibility of becoming a part of the Noble Sangha, that's open to everybody. So take advantage of this opportunity.